to end, we're gonna play. Yeah, let's let's do some chin stuff. Oh yeah, he's got. Oh man, it's gonna bum me out, isn't it? Cool. Let's do some chin stuff. Fuck it. Let's do some chin stuff. Let's. <laughs> I haven't watched this. Let's do some chin stuff. Let's do some chin stuff. Let's do some chin stuff. Um, let's do this. So Chin's got a new vlog. I used my parents first. Why is he bragging about this? Why is he bragging about this? I used my first vacay in seven years to take my parents back to Korea. Why is this a point of pride? Why are you happy about this, Chin? You work way too hard to, to be living a life where you only have one vacation in seven years. Do you know how obscene that is? Do you know how crazy that is? That like he's the most important person at Fit Boy. Maybe the second most important. I'd say first, personally, because I feel like, you know, Brendan's whatever he is. But let's see, Brendan's still the talent and the host and shit. He's the second most important person in Fit Boy. Allegedly, according to Brendan, according to him, he has shares in Fit Boy. He probably doesn't get, like, I'm pretty sure, like, he doesn't get paid enough. Like, he maybe, you know, it's one of those deals where you get percentage of the earnings. Like, it's, I don't know, whatever. I'm I'm hoping Brendan is going to be that kind of guy where he, despite having bad business every, other places, he does recognize when some people do help him and do and does well by him. But usually when people are pieces of shit with business in other places, it affects everybody. It affects everybody. So my gut feeling is that he probably doesn't get paid enough. But if he does get paid enough or he gets paid more like over his fucking you know what he's worth whatever or what his average is then i'll be happy about that too that'll give me a lot of joy but i've got a feeling the way he acts and how he is and stuff i don't know you know what i mean can you imagine him pulling brendan to one side asking for a raise can you imagine him saying that he feels like he's overworked can you imagine that scenario i don't know but i just wouldn't be celebrating the fact that i had my first vacay in seven years it wouldn't it wouldn't be a point of you know because that would be something that i'd be annoyed about I'd want to fucking make that something I put into my contract that I get a certain amount of vacations because, you know, you need to stay inspired. You know, I don't know. I don't know if you guys know a lot of editors, but I know a couple that I worked with before. And every editor that's ever, I've ever spoken to who done editing, production shit, they fucking hate it, right? They say it's fucking exhausting work. And you need to take a bit of, you need to take some breaks here and there to kind of, you know, get away from the computer, just have a bit of a break in terms of lifestyle, whatever, maybe. But it's really difficult to do all the time, every single day. So the fact that he does that with no stop, with no fucking burnout and shit is admirable, but also it's kind of clearly being exploited because he, they know they can count on him all the time. They know they, they know that they can count on him because I'm sure there's a, probably going to be a clip on this. I'm sure there is. I haven't watched it yet, but I'm sure there's going to be a section in this video, we're going to be watching this vlog, where he's going to be working on a holiday. So his title is this vlog, My First Vacay in Seven Years, Took My Parents Back to Korea. I'm pretty sure in this vlog, we're going to see a clip of him working remotely in fucking South Korea while he's on holiday with his parents for the first time in seven years. As a brag. That is crazy to me. Right? If you're going to be working that hard for seven years, you you should be afforded one week of not being able to touch your computer or not being able to look at your emails. You should be allowed that grace. Like, that's fucking wild. But anyway, not my business. Let's play the vlog. Let's go to Korea. I'll see you there. <laughs> That's all. This nigga's always drinking alone, isn't it? Not that it matters. I drink alone myself a lot, but it's just on video. It's just, I don't know, man. I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, we're already stopping it one second in, but this nigga's always drinking alone. It's just fucking hilarious. <laughs> Hmm? This is definitely some this is definitely some Asian shit in it. Guys had a full beverage, a whiskey and a beer, and a full fucking Panda Express rice with chicken and shit before a flight. Wasn't I saying earlier before another pod that like, I'm kind of a fan now of like doing the whole fasting before I fly. And then wherever I land, especially if it's a European flight, just eat when you get there. But the the you know, the eating of a burger before it's just it's just annoying. The sound, it's just too much sometimes. You get on a plane, the pressure inside the plane, the altitude, it can fuck you up a little bit. But this guy's had a full bowl of fucking rice, a beer, and a whiskey before a flight. 
fair play. <laughs> and then he ate on a plane again. <laughs> <laughs> this guy shit. Chin is fucking. That's the one part of band that's definitely Asian, isn't it? He can eat. He can fucking chow down food, boy. He fucking is a human trash trash can for real. Like he gobbles down food. He just had a full meal at the airport, a beer and a whiskey, and whatever airport food they give you. Fucking hell, he's he must have blew up that plane toilet. <laughs> Shit, I guess uh, Brendan's um, rubbing off on him, innit? But I think someone uh, who said, I think someone said that Koreans drink a lot, innit? Right, that's part of their culture, right? They, 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 they can drink pretty well, so probably that makes sense why he's, you know, necking down the beverages too. Because God Almighty, Chin. Drive to the motherland, at least the airport. New tattoo ideas. You're gonna get new tattoo ideas from artwork you see in an airport. We're doing our first ever night on the town in Korea. Wow. Don't get me wrong, if I was in that fucking market, I'd be fucking gobbling it, but like, wouldn't you want to exchange whatever you ate at the airport and ate in the plane for just this? Wouldn't you want to just land there and just go fucking crazy from the beginning of this market all the way into the end? That's what I'd do. If that was me, I would be gobbling up everything in sight from the beginning of this market to the very end. That's what I'd be doing. I wouldn't be eating a fucking Panda Express from the fucking airport. <laughs> no? <laughs> or am I bugging out? I don't know. I'd want to I'd wanna go to Korea and fucking soak in all the fucking smells, the scents, the noise. Like, oh, you know? I'd want to suck everything in there. Do you know what I mean? Gobble it all up, bro. Yo, Chin can eat, bro. Chin can fucking eat. Holy shit. He is munching this stuff. Like, it's Im actually impressive how much this guy can fucking gobble down. God almighty, bro. I'd be shitting out of every orifice in my body. He had two meals. One before the plane. One on the plane. Then having however many bowls here. Whew. This guy's got a metabolism and a half, bro. <laughs> Wait, so here, wait, what's that text say? My dad was worried my mom wasn't filming correctly. <laughs> Fair play. Alright, we're back at the crib. And now getting the party started, the after party. Let's go. Just kidding. Good night. Yes, even in Korea, still gotta do work. I gotta send a bunch of audio numbers to the team. Nah, 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 nah. That's not cool. That's not cool, man. That's not cool. You're out on holiday. You're, you're back to the mother country, to the motherland with your parents. You know, usually something that doesn't happen too often, especially in your adult age, to be able to go on holiday with your parents. You go back home and then you're spending time instead of sleeping, instead of chatting with your parents late at night. You're here on your bed with their, I don't know, shitty or good Wi-Fi, wherever you got going there, working. Come on, man. Brendan couldn't give you just a couple, a week, seven days, five days to just be with your family and just in, enjoy your time off. Because if anything, I'd imagine if you're a chin and you're working in that role, part of making maybe to stay inspired, to stay fucking driven, to stay fucking hungry, is to have a bit of break. Have some breaks here and there. Why can't you just be able to just cotch and chill? Why do you have to be working all the time like this? Especially for the amount of time you put in. Surely seven years of non-stop work should afford you the luxury to just be able to just stop for seven days i'm not saying because in my opinion considering when you consider how far away south korea is especially on a flight i'm assuming it's like a minimum of 10 hours i'm assuming even from the states if that's the case you're essentially taking a day to fly then a day to fly back 
if that's me and you're going back to home, that's a minimum of a two-week holiday, in my opinion. That's two weeks. If you want to be technical, 14 days. But in my opinion, I think that's two weeks you should be allowed to go home. Especially if you live, like, you know what I mean? Your, your family's in Southeast Asia. Your family's in South America. Your family's in fucking Africa. And shit. You should be afforded the ability to go and hang out with your family. Even if you're not going to do two weeks. Maybe give me a week and a half. But seven days, which makes it five days only in your motherland. And then you have to spend some hours during the day fucking working on your laptop and sending stuff from like no one gives a fuck what quality the show comes out in whatever you can get someone to do the work for you for the in-between times it's like i don't know i feel like this is really really horrendous and if anything goes to show just how weird the fucking working relationship is at thick boy because in my opinion i think if you're brendan you can fuck over everybody you can if you want to it's not bad it's not good karma clearly but if you want to fuck over bgr because you think it's disposable fair enough if you want to fuck over Malik because you don't like him, fair enough. If you want to fuck over MJ because whatever, she's not doing enough work, whatever. If you, Whoever you want to fire and fuck over because you think they're disposable and they're replaceable, cool. Even though I don't think that's good a comment or good energy to put out there, but cool. But one person you shouldn't be fucking over, in my opinion, you should always keep them close to your chest or close to you as possible and make sure they're okay and make sure they're always happy, is someone like a chin. Because he's a one-man machine. He's switching scenes when he's in the studio. He's editing. He's clipping. No, not clipping, but he's, you know, he's uploading shit, like recording, audio, all this, whatever he's doing. He's one man machine. So if if anyone should be fucking looked after, it should be him. But what do I know? This will take quite some time. But uh, yeah, I'm going to try to get as much time as possible before my family heads out. Alright, let's get the day started. I'm on our way to see Halloween. Grandma. Yeah. Everything's cool. We're on our way to a restaurant with the family. My dad's side. And uh, it is packed here. I'm guessing it's going to be expensive, which I'm paying for. So let's see how it goes. Beautiful in the front here. We're all seated here. I'll show you. Uh, looks like there's my mom, my Como, my aunt, there's my Como son, Youngju. <laughs> Part of the family as well. All the family members here. Bram. Do you remember do you remember when Chin was saying that sometimes people think he's white? <laughs> do you remember that? Do you remember when Chin was saying that sometimes people think he's like oh was it Texan or some shit? Do you remember? <laughs> because he sings country music. Jim Chin said that, like, with a straight face, that like, he thought people feel like... <laughs> this is the fucking sweetest Asian family ever, but they're, as Brendan would say, they're Asian as shit. They look fucking adorable, but there's absolutely nothing Caucasian about these people in the slightest. Do you remember when he said that? He thought people... <laughs> oh, he got to love Chin, man. <laughs> <laughs> this is the restaurant we're going to to meet up with my aunt and my husband. It's called Yongbu Po. Can you imagine? Can, can you, like, I don't know. I think Asian families are a little bit like African families. Probably, right? Maybe not South. Maybe South Korean aren't as traditional as other Asians. I'm not really too sure. But can you imagine the amount of times people in Chin's family have asked him during the trip, "When are you gonna get married? <laughs> when are you gonna have kids?" <laughs> can you imagine how many times that's come up in a conversation? <laughs> can you imagine how fucking like exhausting that must have been, like for him being at this fucking trip? Is that oh, like? And he's the only thing he's fucking married to is fucking what's it called? The only thing he's married to <laughs> the only thing he's married to is, is Brendan Shaw. <laughs> and the the kid. They're probably thinking he's speaking to his girlfriend when he's on the computer all the time, but he's sending back clips. They think he's on Skype with his girlfriend, but he's talking to fucking what's his face? Who's that fat boy? Who's that fat kid? George. Right? <laughs> Oh man, it must be so exhausting. Like, god damn it, man. Like, 
I don't know. I don't know. I'm fucking. <laughs> I'm sad. <laughs> I'm just so sad. I really do feel <laughs> really sad for Jin. This whole entire time with his family. Yo, big up one, Marcos. Has Brendan traveled outside the US? Sometimes I think his bigotry comes out of that. Has Brendan ever tried to be the... Hey, big up Juan Marcos. Thank you for the one... Fa- I was like, what, what is that? I don't know what ARS is, but thank you so much. Regardless, I appreciate you, my friend. Let me like this comment. Has Brendan traveled outside the US? Sometimes I think it's bigger. Yeah, for sure. For sure. I've said it before that I honestly... No. No, I'm not going to say that. I'm not going to say that. I'm gonna say, fuck it. It's my fucking... I say, say what the fuck I want. I personally think... I, me, me personally... I personally think my humble opinion is that Brendan does have an issue with black people. That's my personal opinion. He may enjoy the the music. He may like the raps. He may like the comedy. He may like the fashions and the sneakers and the bad bitches and shit. But I think, does Brendan actually like black people? Like having them as friends or whatever? No, not in the slightest. And I feel like a lot of that has to come with like college days. Like something happened in college with football. One of them bagged his girl. I don't know. Something happened. So I think if there's one place where he's got bigotry, it's definitely against (laughs) African-Americans. I think he's not a fan. That's my only opinion. My only opinion. Everybody else, I think it's definitely what you said. uh, One, Michael, it's definitely a lack of, you know, traveling. The guy is like, um, Brendan's the kind of person I can imagine who says stuff like, I'm sure you guys have it in America specifically. You have a lot of it because you have so many different cultures there. But there's definitely people in America, I think, who say phrases like, why would I need to go to Japan for sushi when we've got great sushi around here? Right? I'm sure those people exist. And I think Brendan's the same. Because LA is like a multicultural, worldwide city type of thing. Why would I need to go to Mexico when I've got great Mexican here? You know what I mean? like It's like all that sort of shit. So I think he's got that kind of level of bigotry. Like, there's no need to travel because... In his head, America's the best. Or there's no reason to go other places to go see what they're good for. There's no curio and oh, that's the other thing too. He has a real lack of, I think, overall curiosity. He's not really in nothing really. Think about it. Like everything's just like social media posts and headlines. There's no real curiosity to learn things and to go a bit in depth and to whatever. It's just that's probably why he's really into fucking this is a really weird take, but this is probably why he's into fucking, um, what's it called? Serial killer documentaries and shit. I feel like a lot of people in general who like watching, again, I don't blame if you do, but I feel like a lot of people who watch documentaries like they're fucking history books, like they're reading history books, it's a way for you to feel like you're smart. It's a way to help make you feel like you're intellectual. <laughs> you get what I mean? It's like uh, people that like to watch documentaries and they take them as gospel and shit. It's a strange thing because it makes you feel like you've got an interest. You've got a hobby when you watch four back to back or something. It's like, come on, bro. It's like, really? Like, it's a documentary. It's It's got a point of view. It's got a bias. It's got a narrative it's trying to push. It's got an agenda. Like, you know what I mean? It comes from a particular viewpoint. It's meant to be entertaining. None of this is reality. None of this is actually giving you the real deeper level understanding of what's going on. Maybe it can be a way in. But it's not going to give you everything. So, yeah, that's where, that's my thinking of it. But I don't want to go on a rant about it because if I start talking about it, everyone's going to be upset because I'm going to start saying stuff that's going to make me look a bit, you know. So, <laughs> I'll keep it to myself. <laughs> hey, yo. Hey, yo. Auntie looking a bit. Hey yo, auntie looking a bit. Not that auntie. That auntie. Hey yo, auntie looking a bit. Hey yo, auntie looking a bit. Hey yo, auntie. What well, go on, auntie? What's good? You're right, auntie. I'm a bit hungry, auntie. You got, you got, you got some noodles, sign for man. You got some. You know what I mean, auntie? I'm a little bit hungry still. You got any of them dumplings and spring roll things, Auntie? What's going on, Auntie? You got some of those? You know, you make those. You know, you make don't Koreans make those chicken wings, Auntie? Those like spicy chicken wings, Auntie. What's going on, man? You know, I'm black. You know, I like them chicken. You know that chicken you guys make, man? That crispy one, crispy like you. You know what I mean, Auntie? <laughs> 
Auntie yeah. looking a bit, you know, a little bit, you know what I mean? Korean Angelina Jolie and that with the fucking cheekbones, you know what I mean? Mmm. Mmm. <laughs> This is the main dish, the kaiji chicken. Hey, yo, objectively, for my foodies out there, the food here looks fucking banging, no? I'm all my, all my going crazy. The food looks fucking delightful. Korea is a fucking foodies paradise, isn't it? Jesus Christos. <laughs> How look at this is the this cleanliness in this train is how we have it sometimes. Like, um, if like the mayor of London or our prime minister has to do like a press run and they have to pretend like they take the train to fucking the House of Commons or whatever, maybe right, right? Um, they'll usually clean out one particular carriage and have it, no one there, or they'll place like some disabled guy and a black boy with a basketball and some dude with this white kid with a skateboard, right? And it'll be the cleanest part of the train, right? To make it look like they're actually in a real place. But this is what normal trains in Korea look like. Look at that shit. You could drop your sandwich in this shit and pick it up and it's fine. Like, this is spotless. You can actually eat your dinner from this floor. Look at it. Wow. It's shining. Like, even in like 480... 480p wherever i got this video in it's literally glistening <laughs> look at the order look at everybody orderly sitting down They're like wow 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 jane you want to make a video Nah, man, this is this is this is kind of cute. I'm not gonna lie. Brendan had this guy working on this type of holiday with you. Like, come on, man. Brendan had these. Like, let the guy just chill for a week. No work, please. No emails or nothing. Just let him chill. Oh <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Thank you very much. This is all the street food I wanted to try too. Huh? Not right now though. I have to do it. Okay. This makes me furious as well. Didn't he do the first video when he was in Korea? He went to fucking a 7 Eleven. Why didn't he just pick food from here? Why did he have to go to a fucking 7 and get that horror? You got that sausage and an egg. Like, come on, chin, bro. This food looks way better than the shit that you got before. Later. Let's get that. No sauce? Deep fried shit. Mom, that bite's so small. Okay. Good. I go keep the. So it's actually not known them, but eating guksu. Yeah, mash kimbo baba. My mom's the toughest one. She doesn't like anything. What the oma? What the? Mash sa? I don't believe you, but okay. <laughs> What are you saying, Auntie? Auntie, what are you saying? <laughs> very rare. I'm very rare that my mom likes. Oh, imagine how tasty that is. It's going to be crispy at the bottom, some burnt bits and shit, that kimchi rice. Oh, crackling in front of you. Fuck, man. Fuck. Fuck. Just imagine. Crispy. Just. Yeah. 
It's now Monday night. We just woke up from a nap. My mom says she doesn't sleep during the day, but she slept for a little while at least. And we're heading to a dinner spot with my Como. My Como's back. She's gonna stay with us for the rest of the trip, which is awesome. But for now, we're looking for a spot to eat at because my mom's hungry, my dad's hungry, and I think my Como's hungry too. So. The competition amongst restaurants in Korea must be so fucking fierce, isn't it? Everybody out there fucking eats like crazy. There's tons of fucking great places to go to from street vendors to market people to whatever, right? Like hole in the walls. You really have to be on your shit. You really have to be competing at the highest level. You have to be competing every every day Super Bowl day, right? In the fucking busy districts, busy districts of fucking South Korea. So every day is the fucking Super Bowl. Like you have to be really, really going for it. Because if you slack a little bit and the rumors get out that you don't make your rice a certain way or this is not good, duh, 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 you are dead. You are dead. We'll try to find a spot. And you know I'm going to try to find a sit there before I start grubbing. So we'll see what we find. This is where I saw them filming last night. Yeah, oh, yeah, for sure, Brandon. Yeah, correct. Korea is definitely on my list. Vietnam's on my list in places to go to in Asia. Japan, obviously, especially Tokyo because of my fucking street rare fucking roots and stuff and just wanting to spend money and buy loads of shit. Like, I'd love to go to those places, of course. And also, I've seen videos of, like, guys who live in, like, the Chinese countryside and shit. And I've never, you know, this is a whole different part of China that isn't, you know, the, the stuff that you're obviously used to seeing, like Beijing and shit. But God almighty, mate, the Chinese countryside looks really fun like farmlands and shit really rural the root the food is completely different to what i'm obviously used to in terms of the westernized version of what chinese food is like that would be great to go somewhere completely out of you know completely out of the way really not overly kind of you know gentrified either not a lot of fucking gringos like myself and shit that'd be sick yeah like drama or, t or drama. movie yeah. yep So I guess we're gonna hit this spot here. Mm. Pork dishes. Me not eat swine. No eat swine. This is cooked good. Oh, Thank you. Come on. Chin ain't even gonna pass. Chin ain't even gonna pass for bro up because you say, bro, go ahead, man. You need to, you need to, you need to relax. You need to relax. You need to relax. Someone tell him, go ahead, he needs to relax. You need to chill. I don't know why that got me. But you need to relax. You really do need to relax. Like, you need to relax. He's trying, okay? You need to relax. You need to chill. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, I would eat every single dish I've seen here so far. This fucking food looks fantastic. God almighty, mate. Who said it? Um, who said this? Um, iron privilege, double chin. No, that's the thing, though. He doesn't put in any weight, mate. He eats like a fucking... He eats more than Wings of Redemption. 
but he doesn't seem to put anything on me. Like, he's fucking got a, a fantastic metabolism. So, you should be thankful for that, man. He looks fucking fantastic, to be fair. Completely, like, he's he waffles down the food. Like, he doesn't, Chin is not shy, bro. He eats. Like, this this guy eats for real. Like, no cap in his raps. <laughs> <laughs> Man might want some other meat in there, innit? Get me. Man might want some other meat in there, still hunting. Mm. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> she did it for the camera. Oh, that's cute, isn't it? Right, get get fucking pampered by your pampered and spoiled by the by the by the famine shit, but then you got to rush back to fucking LA to fucking sort out Thick Boy and get fucking the fire and the kid fucking episodes uploaded. Honestly, man, give this guy a fucking break, man. Let him have fourteen days minimum to spend time with his family in fucking South Korea. Come on, man. Jesus Christ. Is it Okay, okay part two on Sunday. Okay, we don't have one. Okay, cool. So, part two on Sunday. I'll probably stream another one then do the other part of it. But this was actually a good one. This actually felt nice. This actually was good. Yeah, exactly. Like chin is tall as fuck compared to his fucking family. He, he doesn't seem to have any other people in his family that are as tall as him. So, Or maybe his family are really short and he just looks taller because, you know, they're just tiny. But um, anyway, regardless, this was actually a good one. This actually didn't make me feel sad. It just made me bummed out that he didn't get more time to spend with his family. But that's his business, I guess. If he's willing to rush back home to fucking sort out thick boy shit, you know, sort of, you know, sort of negotiating more time off. What, what can you do i mean if he's happy with it that's he's happy with it but um i feel like if you've given seven years of non-stop service minimal sick days because i don't remember the last time Chin, oh chin's not here because he's sick i can't remember the last time they even said that so he never takes sick days he probably worked through them he probably turned up in the mask when he's got ill and just worked through the thing did it remotely and shit so you deserve at least a minimum of 14 days to go spend with your family in fucking south korea bro in my opinion but hey if you're okay with it, I'm okay with it. Um, so it is what it is. That was actually a good one. I enjoyed that one for once. It, it didn't bump me out. It didn't make me feel like I should jump out of the nearest window. It didn't make me kind of, you know, whatever. Um, I've, I I left that one with a smile on my face. <laughs> That's what I'm going to say. <laughs>